Well, hey, church, welcome to the extra content of part two of our Rooted series. Part two is called First Place, and we've talked about how we as a church and even as individuals need to place God in first place into our life. Not 1B or second place or as our co-pilot, but really uh, partner with him and say, God, you take the wheel of my life and, and lead through things. And, and Paul encouraged us that, hey, we are nothing, we have nothing, we can do nothing without Jesus. And we realize that that's not to discourage us, that's to free us to realize that we don't have to hold all things together because Jesus is doing that for us. And so I wanted to dig a little deeper into one particular area. We, we gave some areas, if you have not heard yet, and, and go back if you haven't, uh, uh, some areas that we can give Jesus first place in. And we talked about giving Jesus first place in our thoughts, of how our, our internal thoughts become our external actions, and how that thinking is so important. And then we talked about giving Jesus first place in our suffering, of how Paul says, hey, I rejoice in my suffering. And, and he's not rejoicing in, the, in the, the pain, but he's rejoicing what God's doing through that pain. Because the next words he says is, I rejoice in my suffering for you. And so we talked about how God uses our pain for other people. But the third area that is what I want to dig into just for a moment with you in our extra content this week, and that's where Paul encourages us to give Jesus first place in our motives, in our motives. Uh, Paul was very clear uh, at verses 25 all the way down to verse 30, the end of the chapter, where he was saying, hey, my motive is to make Jesus known. My motive is to let people know about the gospel of Jesus. And so uh, he was so clear in his motive. But there's a phrase that came about that I want to share with you that I think might shed a little bit more light on us giving our motives uh, to, to God. In verse 25, the last two words Paul writes, he says, hey, I want to make the word of God, and I love this last two words, fully known. When we give our motives to God, when we open up our life and say, Jesus, you have first place, what we're really doing and saying to God as well as to others is this. We are making our lives fully known. So you know what that means? That means when you go to work, your intentions are fully known. You're not trying to stab someone in the back or, or work around your boss or try to maneuver, manipulate your way into a promotion or into a, a, an assignment. You are fully known that you are there to represent Christ. Maybe when you go to school, you're not there to cut down the teacher or, or to make fun of those and bullies, maybe some students around, maybe you're in high school or in college, and you're not there to, to tear other people down. Your intentions are fully known where you want to get an education, you want to represent Christ even in the classroom. And maybe you're, at, you're in your marriage or you're with your children. You're not trying to use your spouse to get what you want or, or manipulate your kids to do things that you want them to do and they won't do them on their own. Your intentions in your marriage or in your parenting is to be fully known. You see, a life that is fully known before God is a life that God will bless because our intentions are clear, our motives are pure. You see, the purer your motives can be, the, the more blessing that God can share with you. And so Paul, I love what he tells us. When, we give it, when we're called to give our motives to God, it's saying, God, I want my life to be fully known before you and to be fully known before man. And so church, let me encourage you this week that you would make your motives fully known before God and that we are an open book. We're not worried about hiding or, or looking and maybe kind of keeping some things secret. Or we're not worried about people finding things in a closet or, or in a back room or, or in an inner chamber of our heart. We are just living our lives to be fully known before God. And when we do that, when we give those motives to God, when we say, God, I'm, I'm living in a pure motive sense, as much as I can. I'm not trying to manipulate or maneuver, and I know we're not perfect, but I'm trying to live this life fully known before you. God says, hey, that's a life that I can bless. That's a life that I want to bless. And church, we want God's blessing on our life. So this week, let me encourage you, let me challenge you to live your life fully known before God and before man and give your motives to Jesus. God bless.